From the outside, everything seemed amazing. Former beauty queen and cheerleader Lindsay Shiver married her college sweetheart, Robert Shiver. He was a football player at Auburn and came from a family with lots of wealth. Life was good. The good-looking young couple had three boys and lived in a $2.5 million home in Thomasville, Georgia. They flew on his family's private jet and had a vacation home in the Bahamas. And that's where this story turns bad. Lindsay allegedly had an affair with a younger man who lived on the islands and worked at a place called Grabber's Bar. Robert found out about it and filed for divorce things got nasty, and that's where this story turns really bad. Lindsay, along with her Bahamian boyfriend, are accused of soliciting a hitman to kill Robert. Lindsay and the other two men connected to the alleged murder plot are out on bond. So, what does the timeline of events in this case tell us about Robert and Lindsay's relationship? And what do these body cam videos tell us about Lindsay's state of mind? We'll take a closer look as we investigate the love triangle murder plot in paradise. I'm Vinny Politan. Thanks for being here. Every time I talk about this story, the first question that pops into my mind is, what was she thinking? What was the end game in all of this? And we're talking about Lindsay and Robert Shiver. This is a couple of college sweethearts. They have the family. They're, they are literally living the American dream a beautiful home, beautiful children. They're good looking. They've got lots of money. His family's got a private jet. They're going down to the Bahamas. Like, what, what, what could possibly be wrong here? What could possibly be wrong? Well, things did go wrong. And when we look at the timeline of what happened in this story and in this case and with this couple, it seems clear that this is a, a case involving infidelity and a, a breaking apart. And then the question is, once you begin this breaking apart process, when you've been that invested for so much of your life and you've got children and money and everything else, sometimes things get out of whack. And, and sometimes people do or say things that they wouldn't ordinarily do or say. So first, let's go through the timeline. So we get an understanding for what was happening in the relationship between uh, Robert and Lindsay. On February 18th, Lindsay Shiver went away for a weekend trip without her family. On February 20th, Robert called 911, afraid Lindsay was setting him up. The last week of March, Lindsay, Robert, and the kids go to the Bahamas for spring break. On April 5th, Robert files for divorce. On April 6th, Lindsay files for divorce. On April 12th, Robert calls 911 about a strange package. On April 30th, Robert, his mother, and Lindsay call 911 during a custody exchange. On July 16th, Lindsay calls 911 because Robert won't let her on their private jet. On July 16th, Lindsay allegedly sends the kill him message to the hitman. On July 21st, Lindsay is arrested. All right, I want to bring in our, our special guest to work through and try to figure out what exactly is going on in this relationship. Joining us, host of the Hidden Killers podcast, Tony Bruschi, and criminal defense attorney, former prosecutor, Tim Jansen, also with us, who knows a lot about this case as well. Um, Tony, I'm looking at this relationship. Am I getting anything wrong here that before all this controversy sort of flares up, like this is a great life for everyone, a great life for him, a great life for her, and, and a great life for the three children. It really is. It's a, it's a perfect life. It's a wonderful life, at least on the surface. But like in so many cases that you and me both cover, all roads lead to narcissism. And I think that's what's happening here. And, and the thing is with narcissists, they're pretty good at cutting off their own nose to spite their own face. And I think that's what has happened here. The level of entitlement that she had was absolutely stunning. But after 13 years of marriage, living this high life, I guess it, it, it's kind of the normal uh, for him. But all that being taken away from you, just the thought of that because of your own poor choices, it's too much to handle, especially if you are a narcissist or have narcissistic tendencies. So rather than deal with change like a healthy person, they go to extremes with this rage and this arrogance. 
and they believe that their actions are justified. Tim, what do you think went wrong in this relationship? What was it? Well, you know, you don't know. Um, in all fairness, you know, I'm a member of the same country club as Robert is. So I drive by that home every time I play golf. Um, she lived a charmed life. She had the children. Um, and it, it's clear if you look at her comments during that video at the house, after all this was breaking down and he caught her having an affair, she called the police so he, because she couldn't get on the private jet of his family to fly down and see her lover. The audacity. I think she just believed she could do whatever she want because she was a mother of the children. And it's crazy, the life he provided the income the family his family had the house um and she was trying to take advantage of it even after um her affair was uncovered and then she decides to send this a picture and tells him that a hitman to kill this guy uh it, it, the audacity is out is it's crazy i want to play a 911 call that was made by uh robert and he's calling and and He's really laying out what he believes is happening here. And there's, there's a bunch of things happening, including some strange packages that are showing up at his house. Let's take a listen. So uh, my wife just got back from out of town and I uh, believe that we are heading down the road of getting divorced. She just cut my cell phone off um, from Verizon. She called Verizon and had my cell phone disconnected. So I'm calling on my mother's phone at the Verizon store because the only way I can get it back active is if she releases it. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have to go over to uh, our home. And with the way that she is behaving, I feel like she might try and call the police to try to set me up as soon as I get there. And I wanted to try to get out in front of it because I'm not a, a risk of, you know, doing anything crazy. I'm just trying to go to my house, and if I need to pack my stuff and leave, I can pack my stuff and leave. This is chilling, Tony. Things are so broken in the relationship, and we know when people are breaking up, sometimes accusations fly back and forth. Sometimes people try to use law enforcement, you know, to sign of as, as a wedge as, and as a shield. Um, but he's very sophisticated, right, in his approach to mm -hmm. all this. But things at this point clearly seem to be broken, and he's very suspicious. Yet, when we go back to the timeline, after all this, they still go to the Bahamas for spring break. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the plan, at least. And that doesn't actually quite happen the way that they're thinking. We saw that video as well. But... Uh, with that, that 911 call, good for him for getting ahead of this and not just acting on emotion. That's a scary thing to be realizing these things and putting things together, thinking that your loved one is capable of plotting some sort of maniacal plot, which this kind of appears like it was, like making him paranoid, making him wonder, is there someone out that's watching us? Is there something else that's going on here um, to, to basically set him up uh, to... For, for failure at the end of all of this. You know, Tim, this is the other thing. I, I say this a lot, that when you go to a courthouse in any town or city, people always think, oh, the criminal courtroom is the most dangerous. And I always say, no, no, no. It's the family <laughs> law courtrooms that are the most dangerous because that's where the emotion takes over. Everyone is so invested in what is happening, and it's a conflict. And, 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 and I think... You look at this relationship, and as the breakup is going is going on, it seems like she kind of loses touch with with real reality in, in in the way she's acting and reacting in these circumstances. It's it's almost like she has she's no longer herself. She's turned into someone else, and it might be because of the the stress and strain of what's about to happen in this this battle for children, this battle for money, this this thing that's going to happen in the courtroom, and she knows she's going up against Robert and his family, who we know will have in, incredibly powerful attorneys, et cetera. Yeah, the family has good resources. Um, her mother-in-law and her played in the same tennis league at the club, and the friends that I've talked to said that, you know, Lindsay was a normal person, and they, they were shocked when they found out what was happening. 
if you look at the video when the cops show up at the house during the spring break trip, um, Robert looks like a, a completely, if I had a client that acted like his, I'd be very happy. He was reasonable. He was patient. He was explaining things, this video right here. And she just showed herself to be the arrogant, elitist, entitled person. And at the end of this, you'll see the deputy walks away and looks to the other deputy and says, money. Can you believe it? They're fighting over who's going to fly their private jet so she can see her lover. It's just crazy. And you're right. The most dangerous people are family law cases. My criminal cases, I've got bad people on good behavior. In family law, you got good people on bad behavior. And it's very dangerous. That's, that's the best way to put it. I am going to steal that and use that from this point forward because that is so incredibly true. Um, so, so, Tony, when you look at her and where she came from, um, you know, she was a beauty queen at one point, but I don't think she grew up living the life that Robert necessarily did. No, I, I don't think she did uh, either, but uh, into her adult life, she was you know, adored for her looks, adored for a lot of physical things and maybe not so many deep things. And then as one gets older and life continues on and you're living this kind of charmed life, and you're a narcissist, uh, you're, you're not quite happy with, with the way that things have, have panned out and maybe you want something more. And like I said earlier, cutting off one's nose despite their face, they're very good at that and, and don't even realize the damage that they're getting themselves into and then are shocked once there's repercussions for those actions. Okay, our guests will stay with us when we come back. Who are the Bahamian defendants, her co-defendants in the case? Who are they? What are their roles? And will they all stick together at trial? A former ballerina charged in the death of her husband said that she attacked her and she shot him. She's claiming that he is the aggressor in all of this. I see a liar, I see a manipulator. She killed my dad. Will the jury see her actions as self-defense? Why did she have every reason to fear him? Or murder. The Black Swan Murder Trial. Live coverage weekday mornings, 8, 7 Central on Court TV. Do you still love Lindsay? What were you guys saying in court today? Would you ever want to hurt Robert, or is this all just accusations with no... Do you have any comment? That's Court TV's Matt Johnson down in the Bahamas tracking down Lindsay's lover after a court appearance. Everybody's out on bond in this case, but let's go through so you understand who everyone is and how they're connected to one another. And we begin with Lindsay Shiver, uh, 36 years old, former pageant queen named Miss Houston County in 2005 and became a cheerleader at Auburn. Robert Shiver, 38 years old, son of Alan Shiver, served uh, who served four decades as a CEO of a $5 billion company, his father. He was a long snapper for Auburn football, later went on and signed with the Falcons. Now, Lindsay and Robert met 2007 at, at Auburn in a fitness class. Three sons, ages 12, 11, and 5, married for 13 years, but Rob filed for divorce in 2023, citing an affair. That affair was uh, Lindsay with a man named Terrence Bethel. He's 28 years old, younger, uh, a Bahamian native. They met while she was vacationing in Great uh, Guana Cay, a resort island off the coast of Abaco, and he was working at Grabber's Bar and Grill. Now, Terrence Bethel is friends with a man named Farron Newbold. Farron, 29 years old, is a father of one. He's an aspiring music producer, the son of a very well-respected local politician in the Bahamas, and his day job is as a structural engineer at a power company. And what happens is, is Terrence Bethel allegedly connects Shiver with Newbold and texted Newbold, 
kill him with an image of Robert, her husband, on WhatsApp. Authorities found this during an investigation into a break-in at Grabber's Bar and Grill. So someone broke in at Grabber's and they grabbed Terrence's phone and they found the message between Shiver and Newbold. The kill him message. All right, let's bring back in our guests still with us, Tony Bruschi and Tim Jansen. Tim, um, looking at this case, there are three defendants in all of this. Um, and Bahamian law, a little different. I know for some time they all had the same lawyer. I don't understand that exactly. But <laughs> it seems the defense to all of this may be, oh, this was just a joke. What do you think of that defense? Yeah. That, well, that's their joke. And, you know, we discussed this before, how the same solicitor could be representing all three. Um it's not a joke that the penalties for this crime, conspiracy to commit murder in Bahamas, you look at 30 years to life. But, but together, if you put the timeline together and then you put down the comment and then you put down the actual picture. So yet what you have, you have, have words being given to a third party to commit a crime. And then she adds a picture so he knows who the person is they're asking to kill. That was done in furtherance of the conspiracy to commit the murder. They've done enough to convict them under Bohemian law. Now, I don't expect them all, any of them to flip because they're all related. They may have the same lawyer. Uh, I think they're all going to go down together or they're all going to walk together. You know, Tony, when, when I heard about the defense being it's a joke, when you send a joke like that, you need the LOL. You need an emoji, yeah. and you don't send a picture of the person that you want killed. No, that's not usually how that goes down. I mean, there's, there's a, I just want to kill him. And, and we all have said that before. And then there's, kill him. Here's the image. Here's everything you possibly could need to recognize who this man is. And then let's get the hitman involved, too. It's not just a little side conversation letting off some steam. This is getting someone else involved, which is obviously where we saw uh, Farron Newbold get uh, involved as well as the you know, alleged possible hitman had this all come to fruition. Now, Tim, I understand Lindsay and Terrence perhaps having some allegiance in all of this because I think they, they still have the hots for one another, right? So I, I get that part. But Farron Newbold um, strikes me as a guy father's politically connected down there in the bahamas he's working he's got like real jobs he's an aspiring music producer but also works uh has has other jobs I i'm surprised that he doesn't become the one right the one that could that could either flip or say listen i don't want any part this wasn't me these people dragged me into this i have nothing to do with this and kind of throwing them uh, un under the bus a little bit. At least that's the way I would expect it to play if this was if this was being tried up here in the states. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point, Vinny, because he looks like he's the one that would be able to cut the deal with his father being politically connected. He's really the third party. All he was a conduit. He didn't take any action from what it appears. He would be the one that they would want to cut a deal with, right? To prove. But I, I think Bah Bahamas is such a small island that it, it, it's just not heard of for these people to testify against their own. Now he might testify against Lindsay, but he might have a hard time testifying against a fellow Bohemian friend of his. And that might be the sticking point. We know the trial got continued after everybody wanted a speedy trial and they said we're ready to go. It got con continued from July one. So we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, at this point, no one's in a rush because no one's behind bars. But uh, Tony, she she mm -hmm. served some time in a Bahamian jail, which, mm -hmm. you know, if you're looking at 30 to life, that's that's basically your life. Those are, you know, those are some good years. <laughs> you know, when yeah. if she got out, if she got out, she'd be perhaps in her 60s or 70s when all that happens. I mean, everything is at stake here. I am. I, I'm still baffled by how this actually happened. Um, your thoughts about 
her being the American in the Bahamas, and they're they're the two that you know are from there. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think uh, exactly what we just said there uh, about uh, Terrence and Farron. They're from there. Um, they're likely, in, in my estimation, probably going to get uh, lesser charge here because if we look at it, the the ringleader in this seems to be Lindsay. She's making the request. Terrence is the one that kind of speculates on it a little bit, you know, even has that um, that text that uh, saying Bethel wrote this. I'm about to come out of retirement for this. He's flying to Baker's Bay and she's thinking about letting me kill him. But he has the kids. That's from the Daily Mail. Uh, but it's uh, with that being said, they're the ones that are kind of speculating. They're the ones who didn't necessarily order anything. They obviously never executed anything. Uh, there's kind of just discussion about here's what my girlfriend said to me. So I'm going to guess at the end of the day, uh, it's not going to be looking very good for Lindsay and probably a little bit better for Terrence and Farron, especially with Farron's political. We have about 30 seconds left here, Tim. Um, what are your thoughts? Do you think Lindsay ends up with a life or does her life end up behind bars in the Bahamas? I think these crimes in these foreign countries, we're seeing this, okay? We're take, people taking ammunition to these foreign countries. They're serious about gun laws. They're serious about outsiders coming in here committing crimes. Now, her family is not paupers. They have money. They don't have the money that the Shivers have. But I think she's going to end up worse than the other two. And that's just a matter of home rule, right? And she had the motive. She had the motive, and she caused this. She provided the photo. I think she's not going to do well. Tim Jansen, Tony Bruschi, always great to have your insight. Thank you both so much. When we come back, what is going on with Lindsay? for your family back home, your boys. How about Robert? Any message for Robert? Where are you staying here on the island? Will you please go on the grass, bro. Put these people in the grass. Lindsay, you want to say anything about the allegations? Any message to Robert or the boys? Do you have any comment? Do you still love Lindsay? What were you guys saying in court today? Would you ever want to hurt Robert, or is this all just accusations with no... Do you have any comment? Matt Johnson, unchained down in the Bahamas. Um, everyone is out on bond. They're free to come and go uh, to the courthouse in the courtroom. Lindsay's allowed to come back to the States as well, uh, waiting for the trial. Um, in, in looking at the buildup to everything that happens here, happened here and the, and the allegations, there were problems and they were not agreeing. And these things manifested themselves in, to the point where there were disputes about custody and where the children should go and who can see them and when they can see them. And more than once in these disputes, calls were made to law enforcement. And there's body cam video of what's happening. There was one dispute on April 30th involving uh, Lindsay and, and Robert's parents, which if you really listen to what they're saying, um, you get a much deeper understanding for what is happening here. And you may get a better idea of what's going on with Lindsay at this point. Let's listen. Lindsay Shiver. Yeah. Okay. My in-laws are in the parking lot right there uh -huh. in the white Lexus. Yeah. I've tried to call them. This is my attorney on the phone. Uh-huh. 
um, and have not been able to get a hold of them. But that's what I was calling for, was for y'all to come meet with me, because we're trying to meet up with my husband right now. They were headed home, and then I get the message that they're dropping, he's dropping them with his parents, who have no rights. Okay. So, as a witness for me, that's why I called y'all, to meet me at his parents' house. You called? I called. I was the first one to call. The whole reason we're here is they said that you were following them, and they... They uh, said you were harassing them. Yeah, let me read it. I'm pretty sure they said threatening them, but if you didn't talk to them, then... I didn't talk to them at all. They were saying that you were following them, obviously, and that you got a gun, which no. isn't illegal. It doesn't no, ma- I don't, It though. doesn't matter, though. But I don't. And, oh, my God. Yeah. Oh my so, God. she... Your mother-in-law, something car. is... She's freaking out, apparently. She's but, hypomanic. But, she has a mental issue. All yeah. three of the people in the car have a mental issue. Don't they? Yeah. They don't need my kids. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're saying the same thing. Y'all don't know her. You yeah. don't know her like me. No, I don't. I don't know her. So, so it's, it's, not a, it, it's not a good environment. It's a toxic environment. And it's a well, I mean, uh, considering uh, not just you, but her own mom saying the same thing, I'd be inclined to believe it. We were headed to where our big home is up for sale because Robert was going to bring the kids and let us see him because Lindsay was not answering their phone calls all day today. So they thought she killed herself, to be honest, and had taken an overdose or something. Okay, let's try to get to the bottom of what's going on with Lindsay at this point uh, in the case, in the story. We'll bring in our experts joining us, psychotherapist, CEO of Life Counseling Solutions, Dr. Janie Lacey, and also joining us, nationally recognized parenting and family relationship expert. She has her doctorate in clinical psychology, Dr. Sue Kornbluth. Thank you both for being here. Dr. Janie, let me begin with you. Um, Your thoughts about what's going on here with, with Lindsay? Well, my thoughts are with what's happening with her and Robert, right? There's a lot of intense emotions that are happening. And obviously when we see her response that there's probably been some buildup to this moment, not only the the affair, but probably even before this, that there's probably been some disconnection with the, with the in-laws. So all of those family dynamics is really gonna make sense once we find them out when everything comes out. So we see a lot of intense emotions. We see her reaction when she's hearing what they're saying about her. So it's almost like this war um, of who can have, who can remain in control. You know, something that stuck out to me from the little segment that we watched, Dr. Sue, uh, was I called first. It seems like she Mm -hmm. knew that everybody was gonna call here. Yeah. Well, Vinny, she wanted to get on top of things and she wanted to be first in terms of calling so she could probably have a report that she could use when they go to court. This is all about control. It always is when we have cases like this that are so high conflict that are leading to divorce. It's who, you know, the two people in this, they usually believe their own version of the truth and the narrative that they want uh, to get out to the world and they stand by that no matter what. And what ends up happening is they start to put themselves first and clearly forget that there's children involved here. Uh, Dr. Jane, let's talk about the, the affair itself. At this point of her life, they're together for 13 years, college sweethearts. We know the life that they were living together really because of, of him and his family, uh, but it was a very luxurious life. Um, any thoughts about the choices that she made? When we look at their life, yes, it may be luxurious. It may look um, like they've had it all. But we also know that when it comes to real relationships, that that's just one dimensional. So whatever was truly happening inside that relationship, especially when women in particular tend to have affairs, sometimes there's been a long disconnection even before the affair may have happened. But then we also want to consider potentially personality traits and other types of things that may have played in these situations. 
conditions. So when we're looking at this lay of the land, right? We also know that a lot of distorted thinking comes into play. So once someone has an affair, then they almost like there's a, you know, layman's term, they get drunk with love, so to speak. So they're all they're doing is consuming and thinking about getting their needs met through that silo. And then that when that happens, a lot of people get hurt, not only her husband, but her children, and then it becomes so self-focused about her getting her needs met. And then a lot of people get hurt in the process. Um, Dr. Show, I want you to take a listen. This is Robert on that same day making a 911 call, and he references a conversation he had with Lindsay's mom. Let's take a listen. My wife and I are going through a divorce, and I've been gone all weekend, and she just uh, threatened myself and my mother to bring the kids back, and her mom is saying to take her to the ER or check her into some mental uh, some institution because we think she's having kind of a midlife crisis mental breakdown, so it's super unstable, and uh, she just followed my parents when they left the house trying to find the kids, and deputies were called, but since we live in the city, they said we need to call Thomasville City instead of the county. Okay. Did your parents have the children with them? No, the kids are with me. So, Dr. Sue, there seems to be some concern by Lindsay's own mom here. So, Vinny, you know, that's no surprise to me. I think somebody with her profile and that she is having an affair and is not worried about the consequences that it is going to have for her family, her life, there probably was trauma in her past. I would suspect that there were problems um, in relationships growing up. She appears to me to be very immature. Uh, I agree with the other doctor that she probably did not have her needs met and she's trying to get them met now. And all this goes together to make a profile for someone that probably is suffering from some kind of personality disorder. Your guest before said it was narcissism. I don't know if it is or it's not, but a lot of times you will see in these custody battles that there is a sense of entitlement and control and they want to get their needs met at any cost. And right now, for me, since I do so much work with families and children, the cost is these children. And when you're having an affair, unfortunately, you're thinking of yourself, not your children. And Dr. Jane, the other part is if we presume the prosecution's uh, allegations are true and she's sending an actual text message for someone to take the life of Robert with that, that, that kill him uh, text message with a picture of him. Um, if that is true, what's the process that's going on up here for someone not just, you know, going through with the divorce? Like, the children will be taken care of. She'll be taken care of as well, 13 years. Uh, your life is, will, it, will be fine. Your life will be f very fine. But once you take that next step, now you're, you're introducing this level of trauma to the whole family and to your own children. And that's where we're hearing the word narcissism thrown around, right? So sometimes when we see people that have these extreme behaviors where they're not thinking about consequences and they take it very to the extreme, then that's sometimes where we would consider and look at is there possibly some type of personality disorder because this is not normal behavior yes there are people that have affairs every single day but it does not necessarily mean that there's going to result in them trying to take out their spouse so we know that they get divorced and as you mentioned they can have um, yes a lot of stress and these types of things but we see that under these stressful situations where her husband had found out she's having an affair and her not necessarily um probably having some level of empathy for him, but almost this level of not wanting her life, we can assume that wanting her life to be disrupted. And that's where we see the lack of coping skills and just really getting super focused on just removing the problem in these extreme situations. That's where we, we can suggest that there's probably other things going on with her versus just our normal way of coping with discovering of her affair. Dr. Jenny Lacey, Dr. Sue Kornbluth staying with us when we come back. We're going to dig in to another situation 
This was the infamous video as they're going away and she wants to use the private jet to go see her lover. One of the most successful true crime TV shows ever. This is crazy. Now has a new home on America's original true crime obsession. 48 hours on Court TV. Coming up next on Court TV. This week. We'll get you ready for the proceedings each day in the Black Swan murder trial. Plus Friday, a voice for victims and the tragic case of Rachel Morin. Opening statements with Julie Grant. Mornings at 8, 7 central on Court TV. Where has your husband been staying? Oh, at my house. Okay. It's a lovely situation. So he just isn't home? He hasn't come home yet? Mm -mm. Okay. At my house. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So I want to play for you this video. We've been talking about it a lot. This is what we call the travel dispute. So as you know, Robert's family has this private jet that they use to go to the Bahamas. He's getting ready to go but she wants to jump on the jet, not to hang out with the family, but to go down to the Bahamas to meet her lover. Let's watch and see how it all plays out. So what, what's going on? Y'all are separated or what, what's the, the deal? We have filed for divorce. Okay. Living in the same house, it's hell on earth, as you can imagine. Okay. Um, but anyway, woke up this morning, we have travel plans to leave, mm -hmm. and he's insisting that I don't go. Okay. And then I have my keys, he starts, moves me out of the way, starts trying to unload my car, tells me he owns the car, he owns the rights to it. Just okay. got super aggressive, and that's when I called immediately, because he's been physical before, and I'm just not... Okay. Not so, doing that. So are you just wanting to leave? Or is he supposed to be going with you? Yeah, we're supposed to be going with our kids. So so what's going on this morning? So for the last three weeks, maybe longer, she's had her couple's trip planned with her boyfriend to go to Key West. Okay, but she just said you're going. I, that was to Key West. I'm taking my kids, my three boys, to the Bahamas this morning. Our kids. Our kids. Yesterday, she sent a message saying that she's going to change her plans and now get on the airplane with me and the kids to go to the Bahamas. But I own too, by the way. Land, she's going to go to her boyfriend. Elsewhere. And me and the kids are going to her house. And I told her I'm not supporting that. And you're not getting on the airplane. That can mess with the kids' heads. And it's just something we're not going to do. All right, I need a little help working through this. Dr. Sue, you go first. Vinny... Do you really want the cops coming to your house and interviewing you about a trip that you're taking? I mean, this to me is absolutely ridiculous. They are calling the police there to help them intervene because they can't communicate with each other. You know, th this is the problem that happens in these high conflict divorces. They want everybody else to solve their problems for them. Get in the counseling, get help. This is where you need to work out these issues. He says right there, she's going to see her boyfriend. Well, these are the issues that need to be worked out between the two of you. The police, the family courts are not there to help you work through this stuff. It's for you two to do this. She's entitled. You see it over her face. We don't know if violence happened here or not. She's claiming this and he's remaining as calm as could be. This is just absurd. Dr. Janie Lacey, your, your analysis of the relationship and situation here that we just watched. Well, he has every right to have a boundary, especially when his wife is having an affair and planning a trip to be with her lover, right? So we listen to him. He has a right to have a boundary. He has a right to request her not to go and use their family property in order to carry out her extramatural affairs. But then on the other hand, when we're hearing her saying she's called them because there's been physical um, altercations in the past and she wasn't going to do that. You know, we don't want to necessarily assume that she's crying wolf, but sometimes in these 
these cases when there's high entitlement and there's almost this disconnection from reality that these things can be manipulated in order to have the one up and try to you know show some level of entitlement that she's not going to back down so in these situations that we're looking at it's just so dysfunctional but he does have a right to have a boundary um, especially with given the situation and her kind of pushing through that and wanting to still go and see her lover with disregard to anyone else's feelings just shows the disconnection of reality and potentially how long this has been going on when we see people that have such a disconnection from the consequences of their behavior it's usually because they become numb to it because it's been going on for a while and when you put this into context of what happens next five days later is when she gets arrested as allegedly being part of this plot to take him out um, i want to take a look at something else that is happening uh, in all of this so obviously the arrest takes place she's in a, a bahamian uh, jail for a while she gets free, she's allowed to come back to the United States. She does get some level of visitation, uh, but other than the visitation, she has to stay out of the state of Georgia. Um, but something else happens in Robert's life. Robert, who goes from this high profile case, moves into a high profile relationship with Savannah Chrisley, reality show star. and. On her podcast, Unlocked with Savannah Chrisley, she discussed the beginning of her relationship with Robert. I spilled the beans and was like, yeah, I'm dating someone who their wife, like, tried to murder them. It's such a complex situation of someone that, yes, like, filed for divorce in the first half of the year. I would never date a actively married person. I want to make that very clear. My whole situation, it's given me so much respect for single dads because also I'm like seeing it firsthand. All right, let's talk about this relationship a little bit, Dr. Sue. So Savannah Chrisley, her parents are both in, in prison. They're reality show stars, then got caught up with some tax issues, etc. They had trials, they're gone for a while. She's very high profile. This case was high profile. He's an alleged victim in all this. Um, can it work? <laughs> well, Vinny, I don't know if it can work or not, but what I think is dysfunction finds dysfunction. And I think this is probably what's going on here as well. You know, I don't think relationships can work after not healing properly from the pain and what has gone on here with his ex-wife. It takes time. I think it's important to spend time alone, you know, getting to know yourself after this has happened, not rushing in to a new relationship. To me, this just screams dysfunction that, you know, he can't be alone. He needs someone, she needs someone. And again, you know, where are the children in all of this? I keep saying that because we're not thinking about the children. We're exploiting and talking about what these parents are going through. And the children are the ones in the end that are going to suffer the most from this. All right, we only have about 15 seconds left, Dr. Jenny. You want to put a bow on all this tonight? Well, these dysfunctional love triangles, Vinny, we can probably presume that it will not last, right? Because he is the victim here. His um, soon-to-be ex-wife or ex-wife is the villain. And this person coming in and rescuing, as she said, has a different viewpoint of him being a single dad and these types of things. So very dysfunctional. And they all need to really get to the place of healing. And as my counterpart said, especially for these children who will one day be able to look back and see all of this that's playing out on the screens yeah let's let's hope the children are are doing well and our best to everyone there dr jenny lacy dr sue cornbluth thank you both so much speaking of children before we go take a look at your television screens we have a missing child tonight summer marie harbison summer is missing out of columbia maryland since july 16th only 15 years old here's what i need you to do if you see summer take a look at her face if you see her Pick up the phone, make the call, 911-1800 the lost, or you can call the Howard County Police Department in Maryland 
That phone number is on our screen. Let's see if we can get Summer to a safe place tonight. I'm Vinny Politan. Thank you for watching. Have a great night. And as always, please don't forget to hug the kids.